Battlefield 2042 is arguably the most Battlefield feeling Battlefield game since Battlefield 4. Yeah, I didn't expect that to be the intro to this video either when I started writing it a couple days ago, and especially after I just released a video that is titled I Hate Battlefield. But I have to admit that I was wrong, and the more I looked into the classes in Battlefield 2042, as well as historically the classes in the Battlefield franchise, I just couldn't keep drinking the Battlefield Sucks Kool-Aid. And here's why. I went back through years of Battlefield games to take a look at how each class was divided and how they synergized with each other. Since I know many people were actually holding out on Battlefield 2042's update patch because they wanted to see if the classes felt better. When I first booted up the game after downloading 3.2, I still had all those negative connotations of the game over the past year or so trying to play it and just being disappointed in the game and being disappointed in the franchise. But the more I tried to put my bias aside and actually analyze the classes and compare them to the other games, I'm actually surprised to see where EA and DICE have ended up with Battlefield 2042. So stick with me here, okay? Now throughout the history of Battlefield games, we've had four main classes, Assault, Support, Engineer, and Recon. And although every once in a while we've seen a little bit of variation, these are the most common roles, with Battlefield 2142 actually being the very first game in the franchise to give Assault players defibs and a medkit, with Assault continuing to be that frontline medic player up through Battlefield 3 and 4. Engineer has historically been your anti-tank in your vehicle class. I know personally, I would have an engineer kit that I would use whenever I deployed into vehicles. And when you weren't repairing your own vehicle or friendly vehicles, you were usually out seeking enemy ones. And since Bad Company 2, it's actually been fairly common to have an RPG in one of your slots and a repair tool in the other. Now, support class is typically where we've seen the bigger machine guns, and this role has been relatively unchanged since Battlefield 2 all the way up to Battlefield 4. This class had big guns, big boxes of ammo to help resupply your team, and you're usually up and around your friendly infantry because you wanted to support them with both suppression and ammo. I also have ammo if oh, you need to- Oh shit, come like, on! bullets or grenades Are you or... serious? You're gonna throw an ammo pack in front of my scope? You might need it. And finally, Recon. It's another class that has been relatively unchanged since Battlefield 2, and you could even argue that the original scout kit in Battlefield 1942 is simply Recon under a different name. Equipped with snipers, spotting tools, and things like C4 and insertion beacons, you knew what you were getting into when you selected Recon. If you're listening to this and thinking, yeah, I know all these classes, this is the reason why I play Battlefield, and this is especially the reason why I absolutely hate Battlefield 2042. Well, the reason for this is because I was surprised to find out that Battlefield 1 and subsequently Battlefield 5 actually took all the rules on Battlefield classes that we knew and loved and threw them out the window, which I would then argue is how we got to such a catastrophic mess of special in 2042. Battlefield 1 was actually the first game in the series to significantly change the assault class, with players now being able to use essentially World War I era experimental assault rifles and SMGs paired with long-range anti-tank and throwable explosives like TNT. This caused a few problems. The first, well, assault players were able to get to choose whether they wanted medium range or close quarters weapons, which wouldn't necessarily be an issue if they just had a med kit. But throw in the capability of anti-tank weapons, they could now kill infantry from afar protecting those vehicles and then kill the vehicle themselves. The second problem is that by giving assault players anti-tank weapons, what are we doing with engineers? Would engineers only repair vehicles as their gadget? And since assault had arguably turned into a better engineer without the worry of team play with the repair capabilities, we were now left with an engineer class that is useless, an assault class that was just overly lone wolfy. This leftover engineer class was so useless in fact that they actually removed it entirely in Battlefield 5 and instead gave support players, the ones who have always been used to sticking with infantry and rearming them with ammo crates, a repair tool. Now a class that was historically responsible for taking care of infantry with ammo now had to go around and seek out vehicles for repairs? Well, this creates a third problem. What, what if nobody takes a repair kit? Or what if the opposite happens? What if these players are just actively now seeking out vehicles and you no longer have the ammo resupplies? They not only added tanker and pilot kits, which spawned in with a repair tool whenever you deployed in as a driver of a vehicle, but they also added resupply stations on each objective to rearm, making it so support players didn't have to support. With players rearming for themselves and tanker and pilots repairing for themselves, the support could just kind of run around and kill people and not worry about the team play. Leading into Battlefield 2042, we had an assault class that could kill literally everything on the battlefield and a support class that was so overstretched in its responsibilities, it failed to really do any of them. 
Assault had two jobs, kill infantry and kill vehicles. Support had two jobs, rearm infantry and repair vehicles. But these were not exclusive jobs, which lessened the importance of their role on the team. Medics also had one job, keeping infantry alive. But Battlefield 5 also introduced a small med pouch for every player when they deployed, and they could rearm that at the supply station as well, which once again lessened their importance on the battlefield, especially when you could do squad revives as well. And then Recon, no, okay, I'm just kidding. Recon has actually almost never changed and their role has always been the same. Lay down in the back of nowhere, snipe and spot and just have fun playing your own game. That was unchanged. But for the other three classes, this imbalance of firepower and responsibilities for being team players continued on into what I would guess the development of Battlefield 2042. We were then introduced to specialists with hero abilities and one-man armies were added, which not only made some playstyles more fun, but they actually made them required if you just wanted to succeed since everybody could kill everybody and support themselves. Instead of working together in a Battlefield game, players would just pick what was best for them since they could do it all most of the time. Now, however, I'm surprised to say, but patch 3.2 has completely changed that, and Battlefield 2042 finally feels like a Battlefield game. It actually feels more so like a Battlefield game than we've been able to play for the past six or so years. Now, I've been extremely critical of this game in the past, and in the nicest, most politically correct way of saying it, I am disappointed in this game. The menus are horrible, the UI is confusing, the maps are way too big and empty, the soundtrack just sounds like constant metal screeching. Hey. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? And for some unknown reason, after every match, we have to then leave the other 127 players we were playing with in order to matchmake with, you guessed it, 127 new players. Some of the decisions just leave me speechless, and the specialists were just the icing on the cake that made this game not fun. The game still has problems. But arguably, and surprisingly, the class system is actually not one of them. When you start the game now, you'll see a brand new classes button at the top menu, and clicking this will bring you to a new loadout section for each of the new classes. Assault, Engineer, Support, and Recon, each with their own class gadget and weapon proficiency in addition to their individual specialist gadget. Class gadget is restricted to that class specifically, meaning no matter what specialist you pick, you can still select that gadget. However, each specialist has their own individual ability, which makes them a little bit unique within the overall role. And with weapon proficiency, you're actually not restricted to a certain weapon type whenever you pick this class. Instead, they just give you a bonus if you pick the quote unquote right weapon. Starting with Assault, you will be able to have three extra magazines if you use Assault Rifles, and every Specialist will have access to the Med Pin, which is a quick self-heal. From here, you will select your Specialist, and starting with Mackie, he has his Grappling Hook and Nimble Trait, Sundance has their Smart Explosive Grenades and Wingsuit, Dozer has his Ballistic Shield and Blast Resistance, and Zane has an Air Burst Rifle and the ability to regenerate health after kills. All these Assault players will have access to Smoke Grenade Launchers, Armor Plates, C5 Explosives, and Claymores, which essentially allows you to play aggressive and be semi-self-reliant with your own self-heals and a lot of mobility. Assault now is just pure infantry combat. The specialists are mobile, they have plenty of ammo and self-healing to push and be aggressive, however a player that can grapple or wingsuit away really shouldn't be able to full heal revive or drop medkits, and nor should they be able to use long range anti-tank. This class is now reliant on others to sustain themselves on the battlefield, requiring them to fall back for heals or revives, move to different objectives if vehicles are roaming, or even swap off assault if nobody is supporting them. Speaking of support, for the support class you will be getting an SMG performance efficiency, allowing SMGs to have a quicker draw time, meaning that you will have increased speed when swapping to that weapon. All these support specialists have access to the defibrillator, which, if fully charged, can revive teammates to full health. Irish can also deploy a cover or a trophy system to destroy incoming explosives, and has the cash point ability which will rearm players' gadgets whenever you revive them. A Falk Surrette pistol allows you to heal players from range, or you can even shoot it into the ground and use it as a pseudo med pouch whenever you want it, and her trait allows all revives to be fully healed regardless of defib charge, making her for the quickest full heal revive in the game. Finally, Angel can deploy a loadout crate which allows you to rearm as well as lets players customize to any weapon in the game, and any revives will now resupply ammo to that revived player. Supports can now either equip the ammo crate, med crate, smoke grenade launcher, or claymore gadgets, making them your go-to healer or ammo jockey, and they should be more than capable of keeping your team in the fight. This combined role now allows players to choose how they want to help their team, and I think this is a really awesome play in how the class used to be. You can play as pure ammo, pure healing, or a mix of both, and no matter which one you pick, you're going 
going to be in infantry fights and infantry support no matter what. There's no repair tools pulling you off the vehicles. There's no anti-tank causing you to go search out vehicles as well. And your entire kit is now actively needed to sustain fights and presence on objectives. With the reintroduction of the engineers, they now have the proficiency with LMGs, increasing accuracy when firing from crouched or prone, and every specialist will get access to a repair tool. Boris has access to a sentry gun and his passive allows those sentries to be more effective. Liz has access to a player controlled anti-tank guided missile and reveals enemies when the launcher is equipped and does damage. And Crawford has a placeable Vulcan minigun and can repair much more effectively. Engineers now are the only ones with access to this ranged anti-tank and they can use the recoilless M5 anti-tank launcher, the lock-on javelin, the FXM-33 anti-aircraft missiles, and can also deploy anti-tank mines, EOD bots, and C5 explosive. If you want to support your vehicles by repairing them or support your infantry by destroying those enemy vehicles, the engineer is now your go-to class. And finally, Recon has sniper proficiency, allowing immediate and constant steady scope when ADSing and has exclusive access to the insertion beacon gadget. Casper can deploy a Recon drone with an EMP burst as well as having a passive ability to sense nearby enemies. Rao can disable vehicles and spot enemies that inflict damage to you. And Pat can highlight enemies through a scanner as well as spotting them when doing damage. Your gadgets are the tugs sensor, a throwable proxy mine, tracer darts, C5 explosives, and a SOFLAM laser designator, making it so that Recon is once again the pure sniper, spotter, and disruptor role. I'm going to be honest, I still don't think I like specialists, but this is the best implementation I think we're going to get, and surprisingly, this is the most true to the original Battlefield class system we've had since Battlefield 4. Classes synergize with each other extremely well, and my only real big complaint is that I don't think that every class needs C5 explosive. Restricting that to engineers and Recon would be better in my opinion because I do think it's a little weird that a medic like Falk could simply run up, heal herself, drop some C5 explosive, blow up a vehicle, and then bounce back. But at the end of the day, I'm pleasantly surprised, and I think there are plenty of reasons to dislike Battlefield 2042. I'm not going to bore you with all them here, but after all of this research for this video and then going back in game and once again playing hours and hours of Conquest and Breakthrough with this new understanding of the classes, I'll just leave you with this. If you have the Xbox Game Pass and can play this game for free, or if you're able to get this game on sale for cheap, Battlefield 2042's new class system makes the overall gameplay experience, the experience when you're actually physically in game trying to shoot people and take objectives, they make that experience feel like a real Battlefield game. If you can get over all the other stuff weighing this game down, you will at least enjoy those 20 minutes per round of whatever game mode you're playing. I hope this clears up some questions and concerns on the patch, but what do you guys think? Am I crazy or is this actually starting to feel like a finished game? And do you like the new classes? Do the specialists work well with them? Or are you still on the side that says, uh, yeah, this game is not for me and Battlefield's dead? Let me know in the comments below. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace.